Alright, I made a list of some of the things about 3D printing that I want to talk about real quick. And I'm going to go through that list with you guys. First off, uh, this was a print made after Tom Sandlander. Um, Sandlander. He did a video showing how to make a Prusa i3 printer. And I copied his videos to the T, part for part. So that's what this is. I literally copied his build videos. I may have some small differences, uh, mostly because I'm in the U.S. and he's in Germany, and things are just a little different here and there. So I'm going to go through some of that. I'm going to go through some of the issues I've had, and I'm going to try and break it out into different groups here. So if I get it all in one video, that's great. If I don't, I'll make a second video. So the first thing up was all of my parts that I purchased for this 3D printer were from AliExpress which I linked to from Tom's video. <coughs> he had them all broken out. I had 17 different AliExpress vendors shipping me parts. Um, they took a time frame to ship to the U.S. of uh, between 3 to 12 weeks. Uh, all arrived, some arrived right at the 2 to 3 weeks, and some didn't arrive until the very last day of the 90-day limitations they have. So, literally arrived the day before the last day you could file a complaint. Um, I got one set of wrong parts, my idlers uh, here and here, idler bearings that are supposed to allow the belt to slip on the back end, were too small. They were the links that Tom had, they didn't work, I don't know if it was his links that were bad or I just selected the wrong one, because it brought up a lot on the page. So I had to re-order those. I've replaced this one, I have not replaced this one, I, I made my own. It works just fine right now, I'm going to leave it. Um, some of the parts worked and some of them didn't work 100%. The parts that I ordered, I'm trying to think. Actually, the only parts that didn't work were the idle arms. Everything else worked as as explained in the video. Uh, I had to reorder my E3D print head, but I didn't because I thought it wasn't. I thought it didn't ship, so I ordered it again on eBay so I could get here faster so I could finish the video. It arrived. I built it. And as soon as I was done building it all and putting it all together, the other one arrived at like day 89 of 90. So I have two. The AliExpress experience, I would say good. Good as to be expected as long as you don't mind waiting for shipping. Everything came basically as expected, except for the one part. It cost me another dollar twenty to have it reshipped again. Not a big deal. Second thing up is threaded rods. There are thread rods on the Z-axis, and there are thread rods that you build your entire base frame out of. The thread rods you build your base frame out of are, in his build, 8mm and 10mm. I chose to switch to the uh, 3 8 inch and 5 16 inch because those fit my uh, purchasing power here in the United States a lot easier, and respectively the same nuts and washers and everything to fit those changes. I did stay with the 5mm threaded rods because I would have had to reprogram the firmware to accept whatever I got to replace those. So I stayed with the 5mm uh, threaded rod. It was hard to find. I couldn't find it in any of the hardware stores here. So I went and purchased it online. I found it at Zorro. Not sure if everybody has that option to purchase from Zorro, but that's where I purchased mine from. Shipped in a big tube, nice and plastic wrap, it didn't get bent, didn't get warped in any fashion, and it seems to cause no warpage issues on my prints. So I have no problem with it. It works great. Um, used extra piece. Oh, I ended up purchasing an extra piece of 3 8 along the back of my printer. Uh, you guys have seen my extra side wall here, and that required me to have an extra back uh, piece of rod here because I didn't run the original one all the way through. I could have just ran the original one all the way through and extended them, but I did not. So at that, I had to put another one on after the fact and build some feet for it. Not a big deal. Uh, the 3 8 inch rod is cheap. I actually had some in the garage. So <coughs> Moving on, the frame. I built a 3 millimeter birch board frame. I purchased a 2 by 4 section of it and cut it out of that. What I did was I printed off a model that I found online that was different than Tom's model because it had these winged uh, walls on it. The winged walls I thought would give me more sturdiness. They really didn't. 
they do now because I put that extra piece of frame in there, but they weren't that much better. He went with a very thick piece of OSD, I think it is. I like the idea of having the walls going back, so I did that. The three millimeter um, wall let me keep all Sorry, the battery died. So I was talking about the frame, and I printed out all the stuff uh, from his site. Actually, I got it from another site. I downloaded it. I used his method of the Escher design going through the print, printed it out in like eight sheets of paper, cut it all out, glued it down to this with some uh, spray glue. Works great. Sawed it out with a scroll saw and screwed it all together. I had no problems with that. I did not use uh, metric threads to put the board together. I used uh, imperial threads, like imperial type screws. It was cheaper. I'll get to the fasteners later. Um, sidewall, sturdy scroll saw, cut, and, oh, and when you drill the holes in this, make sure your design is accurate when you lay it out. That's why you want to have the Escher design in there and drill the holes exactly in the center. I actually did a punch on wood, right? A nail punch on wood so that I had exact hole measurements and it paid off because everything lined up beautifully. Excuse me. Uh, fasteners. So, metric fasteners way too expensive here in the U.S. We can't afford to buy metric fasteners in the U.S. They're just too expensive. Um, you pay a buck a piece for a, a screw, sometimes 70 cents, but still it's way too much. Uh, so Imperial doesn't work for this because everything's built around the metric system. The motors have metric threads in them. Uh, your parts have holes for the metrics. It, everything was built for metrics, so it was very hard to change it. So I just went ahead and bought the metrics online. I bought a quantity of 25 of the 40 millimeter, 30 millimeter, 20 millimeter, and 10 millimeter, giving me 100 screws. I had to then go back in and cut those down with a hacksaw and file them smooth so I could thread them into things. I ended up making my 18s, my 12s, everything out of these screws. If anything, I would suggest buying more of the 30s. The 40s, you didn't barely even need them. I think I only needed two. So don't. You have to have those two. But you don't need to buy 20 of them. And you can't cut them down because they don't have threads the whole way through. Uh, I ended up getting round heads and cap head screws. I ordered all cap heads. They shipped round head and cap head. It didn't make that much of a difference. The washers, sometimes your washers you bought, I bought don't fit where they need to be fit. Uh, so I don't have washers everywhere. That's bad. I probably should have bought more washers. So I did Imperial on the frame. Um, I ordered my screws from eBay. I was kind of in a hurry, so I did not order them from AliExpress. It's not the cheapest part of the build. Uh, I want to say I put $15 or more into just those thrust screws. Uh, smooth rods. So I, I don't know what I got for smooth rods, but my Z rod, the one going up and down here, is an 8 millimeter rod, exactly. And that is, that is necessity. So you have to have the 8 millimeter, millimeter rods on the up and the down. And there's a reason for that, it's because that is where your most hold on a second here. That is where the most wobble can come in. If you have wobble on your Z, it's going to affect your X as well. So I made sure I had the eight millimeter rod there. The X rod and the Y rod, I used 7.9 millimeters, sometimes 7.95. I don't know. I, there was something in the U.S. that matches up close to that. I think it's the 5/16. I'm not sure. It actually fit inside the LM8. Elevate U bearings or whatever they are, but loose. Hasn't affected my prints at all, so it wobbles just a little bit on the X axis, it wobbles just a little bit on the Y axis, but because gravity is pulling down, it doesn't affect it very much. So I went ahead and purchased the Imperial rods for these two axes, and I went back and repurchased my Z rods that were 8mm. Worked out good for me. I don't know the quality of these rods. Uh, they're not great. I won't say they're chrome-plated steel or anything like that. Time will tell. Uh, I'm going to skip this one. This was the end stop. I'm going to come back to that later when I talk about some other stuff. Uh, motors. I had five new motors, uh, 1.8 steps, and three of them came off of my CNC machine. Uh, so those worked out really well, the Z-axis and the Y-axis. The X access was not off of that. It was it was out of a printer at work, an old 1980s printer, as was the uh, extruder. 
I had a lot of problems with these two motors. A lot of problems. I strongly suggest buying a set for 3D printing. They're not that expensive. They're 10 bucks a piece if you buy five of them. I had to go back and buy the X1 over. Fix all the problems I've been having. The extruder one, I already know I'm going to have to buy that one over. I haven't repurchased it yet. It, I have extruder issues. Not a lot, but I do have extruder issues. And I think that is why. It's because of that motor. Uh, my wires were all, the wires on the, the printer ones I had, miswired completely. I had to rewire them from scratch. The Z's and the Y were fine because they came off of my CNC machine. So they were already ready for a Arduino uh, board attachment, uh, separate board attachment. Uh, the reason I think my motors were defective is because they couldn't handle the amps that was being put to them and it was overheating the driver chip. It wasn't that the motors weren't running, they were just overheating the driver chip. They ran on different voltages and such forth than amps than the other ones. So that's why I think the problem was. The motors actually did work back and forth. They just couldn't handle the amperage the drivers were putting out for them. Uh, the Z motor, one of them I had to cut off the bottom shaft because it had top shaft and bottom shaft. No problems with that at all. It worked fine. I used the zip, uh, Roto zip, cut it right off. Uh, this, for a while, in some of my videos, I think I may have been talking about an error I was having on the Y axis, thinking it was the stepper um, drivers. It was not. It was actually a set screw that had fallen out. Uh, one thing about the motors is you should get the shafts that have a flat side to them. That will help keep the set screw from falling out. I think that's where I ran into problems with that. Most of mine do not have flat shafts on the side. So when the stepper screw started to fall out, it started going a little bit off, and then when it fell all the way out, it just didn't move. That was a simple fix once I figured out what it was. Um, the gear hub, the hub on the um, x-axis, instead of putting the fat side towards the motor, I flipped it around and put the fat side away from the motor. This let me line up everything perfectly. Otherwise, I had to put washers in there and step the motor off of the uh, x-axis motor holder part that was printed out. So once I figured out I could just simply flip around the gear and tighten it on the outside, that helped a lot. The extruder hub in there, the uh, geared part in there, I had to replace that. It just wasn't grabbing, so I went and got a better one that was centered up a little better. I don't know where I purchased that from. I may be able to find that and put it in the comments. Printed parts. The big problem I had was that I purchased the wrong printed parts from eBay. Do not purchase the printed parts from eBay. Huge mistake. There are no i3 MK2 printed parts on eBay. They may say Prusa i3 or Prusa something. They're not there. And a good way to tell is there's a big gear part that's in there. That is not what you want for this design. Plus you're going to need some specialized parts just for this build, if you're using the same build that I used from Tom Sandlander. Uh, his end stops mount on in different fashion than the original Prusa, and there's a few other changes that he made that you'll need the new parts. Use 3D hubs, um, find somebody that you know that prints, download the parts from Tom's website, uh, 3ddolly.org I think is what it is, it's out there, it's the obvious. I'll put a link to it as well. I think I already have a few times. Download his link. Make sure you get the parts. You need the standard parts he tells you need. You need the adjusted parts he tells you he needs. And there's optional parts. The optional parts are stuff like these arms to hold on your spool thing. You don't need that. The uh, face plate for the LCD screen. You don't need any of that. So make sure you follow his parts. Because I had to reorder. Cost me $25 the first time I ordered. Reordered them all. Cost me about $40. When you buy the parts, I did 20% infill. You can do up to 100% infill. That's up to you. The 20% seemed pretty good, but I actually broke two parts in the process of doing this and had to glue them back together. So maybe 100%. The weakest part by far is the uh, Penda uh, nut holder right here. You're going to be doing a lot of adjustment on that, a lot of adjustment to get that just right. So you'll be tightening and loosening and tightening and loosening. I finally cracked mine. It's still cracked as we speak. So I need to reprint that part in ABS. It's important you print them all in ABS because they get very hot and they will melt if they're in PLA. I have PLA corner stops on mine, and that is all I have. I have the Roaring corner stop. My tray can't go all the way back because of that. Okay, I think it's all on printed parts. Oh, if you're drilling holes in them, be careful. 
watch the entire videos first. There is one spot where you're not supposed to drill it out where the fan attaches to, and I did, and now it doesn't screw in. So don't drill all your holes. I think it's this one right here. Don't drill all your holes just because there's a hole there. Look for fill parts in there, bridges and stuff. You'll have to take that kind of stuff out. Uh, da, 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 that's all I think I did. <laughs> Parts. Hotbed. I bought the hotbed from Tom's Suggestion. It's one millimeter or even 0.5 millimeters thick. It's very thin. Uh, it gets hot with the 12 volt uh, power supply. It doesn't get super hot. But it will, like now I can barely touch it. It says it's 60 degrees Celsius. So, that's good enough for me. I did a second thing. I added a three millimeter aluminum sheet on top of it to keep it very flat. That three millimeter aluminum sheet doesn't flex. The one millimeter one was bent, warped, and flexed all over the place. I then screwed, I put a piece of cardboard underneath of it, and I put a big washer, a one inch washer, underneath of it on top of the two bolts on the bed, set it on the bolt, and use it to push up on the cardboard to push up on the one millimeter heated bed to shove it up against this three millimeter bed as tight as I could. I also bought a sheet of heat sink material that you'd use on a processor to hold it and draw the heat out of it, and I put it uh, eight by eight sheet in between this and the lower bed, the top bed and the lower bed, to allow that heat to transfer between the two. And I squished it in there with the bolt and that washer, and I'll, the heat transfers right through. I also ran my thermistor all the way up to the top bed here. And then I taped underneath of it with the uh, PE, PEI tape, the, the electric tape. I can't think of enough name of it. Uh, I'd like to update that to 24 volts at some point. I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. Uh, I also had to set up a daughter board, I'll call it a daughter board, for the ramps because it couldn't handle the heat and it kept shorting out the ramps and causing problems. So I ordered a daughter board. I went into that in my last video and I'll link it in the, uh, this video if I can remember to do that that I had that daughter board to actually run a separate power supply to heat the bed. So it's no longer running on the main uh, ramps 1.4. It runs through it and then out to the daughter board and then into the power of it. I put the PEI sheet or whatever this stuff is called, that electrical tape stuff down first. It's been a drastic amount of help. I, I know I don't need it and this tape, but I can peel my tape off and it just peels, all the stickiness peels right off real quick. It's a simple change of it. I use just masking tape, nothing special. It's, uh, well, that's not true. It's Sherwin Williams CP66 contractor grade tape. So it is a little special. It is a painter's tape. Sherwin Williams painting. So it's, but it's tan, not blue. I transferred to the top. I did that insert large washer. Talked about that. Cardboard underneath for insulation. Uh, soldered my wires on, no problem. Never did the LED. Didn't solder them on. Uh, next, I want to talk about the Ramps 1.4. But I'm going to stop for a second. All right, we're still recording. The Ramps 1.4 uh, was had four connectors. Don't trust that green connector that comes with that. Throw it out the door, do something, because that melted on me twice. Could have caused the fire for me twice. So that was the worst part of this whole design. I was scared about using the whole thing after that. So I went and bought some black connectors. Exact same look to them, but they were made here in the U.S. And when I clicked them in, they clicked and locked, and I, they don't even get hot. Also not running my heated bed off of it anymore. Could be part of it. Uh, it has poor heat control in my opinion. Uh, it requires a fan. Do not try and run it without a fan. It's just not meant to work that way. So put a fan on there. Keep the thing as cool as you can. I was having trouble with my uh, heating heat sinks on the drivers just falling off. Yeah, they got so hot. So put a fan on it. Uh, and I mentioned that I required a daughter board, so that's all I really have to talk about on that. It wasn't, it's not a great part of the design. In fact, I think it's probably the worst part of the whole design. It could use a lot of help. There's other boards out there that are much better. I haven't tried them. I, I just feel like they've got to be better than this because this is a really bad design. It works. The Arduino. Uh, I cooked my first Arduino uh, that I had, uh, AT Mega, I think is what it is because I flipped a end stop plug the wrong way and cooked it. It will still work if I plug it into my laptop, but if my laptop's unplugged, it does not work. You can have all your 12 volt power supplies, but it won't work without the 12, without the laptop plugged in. So in that circumstance, it was useless. I went out and bought another one, cost me another $10.
reprogrammed it, shoved it up in there, flipped my end switch back before I did so, in stop switch, cable back, everything's perfect. Won't do that again. Uh, you need to make sure that when you're uploading your Marlin firmware to this, that you also save it on your computer. Because if you don't save it, you can't get it back off the Arduino. I didn't know that until now. Uh, I found that out during the film that what's on there, that's it. So when I cooked it, I had to rewrite the Marlin firmware because I didn't save it, so save it somewhere. Uh, document your changes somewhere. I've documented mine on my phone, which I don't have. But I have any changes I've made to the original design, I document it. So that if I ever have to go back and download the original Marlin firmware again, I know what changes I needed to change for this printer. So document them somewhere. I mean, there's only three changes from Tom's download that I have. And I, I documented all three of those, and I will have to list those because I don't have them here. Uh, the COM and the baud rate. Mine's COM port 4. It's been COM port 3 on occasion. That changes. You can be aware of that. And the baud rate is 250000 for this particular machine and this Arduino. I have another machine that's a 3D uh, CNC machine. It won't do 2500 So you got to play with that. Some machines do and some don't. Uh, next thing up, that's really all for the Arduino. Next thing up would be the uh, crimping of the wires. I had the worst luck crimping wires, and it was all due to a bad crimper that I bought online. Don't buy a bad crimper. I've gone through three crimpers. My third crimper works like a charm. Put the wires in there, crimp every time. The old one, the crimps would catch in the gun. They would crush the wires the wrong direction. Buy a good crimper. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, use the DuPont. If you haven't purchased the little DuPont $9 box with all the DuPont things in it, buy it. It makes a huge difference. You can't wire this thing without it. It's my thing. Uh, stepper drivers. This is a big one. They're hard to insert all of them into the ramp. You're going to have to file the edges. And you're going to be careful because they're fragile little things. Um, don't forget to put the little micro switches underneath the driver, underneath the steppers before you underneath the stepper drivers before you put them in. There are three underneath each one. All of them need to go in. There are three, six, nine, twelve total that need to go in. Three under each stepper driver. Put them all in. That's what gets your micro step. Uh, add the heat sink black. Get everything attached. Get all your wires attached. Then add your heat sink. They're going to fall off. They have horrible little gooey sticky things. Um, and once they start to fall off, it's a pain to get them back on there. I've seen some people JD weld them. I didn't want to go that route. So try to get them on last. Your potentiometer. When you're adjusting the little bitty potentiometers, get a magnifying glass if you're blind like me. I can't see them. Don't adjust it while it's on. Turn it off, adjust it, turn it all back on, try again. Or get a ceramic screwdriver. A shard out could cook your Arduino or your ramps. Uh, before you start messing with replacing any of the drivers, which is where I was almost at, make sure to do yourself a favor. Check your motors. If a motor, if you've got motor in the Y that works and X that doesn't, try putting the Y in the other driver and see if it works. If it works there, then it's not your driver. Then it's your motor. Also check your set screws. I thought I had a bad driver. It was just a bad set, or a set screw fell out. So check that all before you start Tweaking your potentiometers too much. I spent a lot of time tweaking those potentiometers. It wasn't even their fault. It was something else. Motors, set screws. Uh, next, I want to talk about end stops, and that's when I thought I was going to go back to. What are the end stops? End stops. Uh, I purchased three of them. I only needed two. So if you're doing the purchasing room times, you don't need all three. Uh, you need a specialized printed part dimension for those end stops because they bolt in different than the original pressure spot. Do not plug them in backwards. Follow Tom's instructions to a T. I did, and then this motor would go over here and lock, and it wouldn't come back off of it. I thought, oh, I'll just switch that end stop around, and that'll fix that. Nope, cooked my Arduino. Don't flip the wire to the end stop. I repeat, don't flip the wire on the end stop. You will cook your Arduino. Flip the motor wires. They're easy to flip. Flip them in Marlin if you have to. That's easy. Don't flip the end stop wires. Okay, so that's enough. It was only a $10 mistake. Wasn't that big of a deal? Uh, 
I use the y, wrong Y corner printed part, so my end stop does not go to the Y all the way because it can't get back there because I used the wrong printed part. So I had to add a little piece of plastic screwed onto the bottom of the board over here to set off the end stop. It's a little different than what Tom did, but it's what I did, so it works. All right, back in here where we at. <coughs> I know a lot, right? Power supplies. I use the ATX PC power supplies. They're simple. I can go through a video on that at some point. I'm not going to do that in this one. It's just shorting out a green and a black wire from the main wires coming out, plugging into it, and using a yellow and a black wire for your power. Get a voltmeter, make sure they're right. You need to know positives and negatives. Plugging your positives and negatives and backwards on either of these boards will cut them. Don't do it. Now what you're doing, have a heavy voltmeter and find out for sure there's 12 volts. Know what you're doing. I understand that stuff, so I did it with no problem. I used the second ATX motor. I'm going to get a second small one, so I don't have a big one. I don't need that big one. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to get switches on them. I don't have any switches right now. I just unplugged them, so I'm going to add that later. The PIDA, PIDA, P -I -N -D -A, I think it is, sensor that comes down the side here and detects the metal of the, of the uh, board. Gave me a lot of trouble adjusting, a lot of trouble. One thing I will say is that adjusting that before you get your z-axis level is a mistake. You need to have a level z-axis. Turn this one or this one separate to get that level first with your board. Then set this. Because if you set it wrong over here, as soon as you move over here, you'll never get it set. You'll ram into the board. It'll try and break it. It'll try and bend your board. You've got to get it set across the z then worry about letting it level out the board. That is key. You will undo that and redo that I don't know how many times to get that where you need to have it. That took me the longest besides my failed Z X motor. It's not an end stop, so don't think of it as an end stop. Don't think of it as when it runs into the switch it's going to stop. It's a little different than that. You've got to understand there's a lot to those things. Uh, those sensors that come down and measure the distance, they don't actually hit. They sense. So it's a little different. And it's in the programming in the Marlin. And there's videos out there about it. Uh, I had to do a lot of reading on it because I didn't understand why it wouldn't stop when it hit. Seems weird to me, but, but you've got to have things set right. LCD. I have none yet. Tom, please give us an LCD code. All right, so I lost a section of the video, so I'm re-recording a section of the video. Uh, I left off with the LCD screen just that I didn't have an LCD screen and I didn't have the firmware for the LCD screen and I kind of said to Tom, you know, hey, if you get around to programming that, we'd really appreciate it because those of us who don't know how to program it, we'd love to have something simple to download. But until you do, I'm fine with what I have. Uh, I had a section here that I talked about Marlin, Contraface, and Slicer 3. So I'm going to go ahead and catch up on those, and that kind of leads back into where I didn't lose the video. Marlin, uh, the firmware I have is from Tom. I also downloaded firmware from another person, and I will get that information and put it in this video. I think I have a link to it somewhere, but I'll put it in the video to be sure. Um, uh, firmware modifications. I made some firmware modifications. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what those are. The firmware modifications I made to his thing were three of them. Just a minute. Well, I, I wrote them down on my phone so I wouldn't forget them. Uh, so I made default axis steps per unit. I put 187, 4,000, 150. Somewhere in the Marlin firmware, that's one of the changes I made. Homing feed rate for Z, I went to 2.5 times 60. And those are the only two actual modifications that I made to the original software that Tom had because things weren't working exactly right for me, so I modified these to get things working right. Um, uh, I need to program the LCD. I haven't done that. I need to program the SD card. I haven't done that. Uh, I need to program in, if I ever do upgrade to the 8mm rod, credit rod, I'll need to do that, but I'm not sure I'm going to because I've been having no problems with these 5 millimeters. Uh, and I need to learn a lot about the Marlin firmware. I want to understand it better. Just time hasn't permitted yet.
uh, front interface. Uh, to me, this is easy to use. I love this front interface software. Um, it seems very simplified. Uh, it shows your temperatures of your bed and your hot end. You turn that part on. If you don't, you can't see it. You can speed up the print. You can slow down the print. You can change temperatures on your bed. Um, you can move the whole head around with this software here. So without the LCD, this is, this is an awesome application. It's free, easy to connect. You have your COM ports and your bar rates, and it's all easy to connect and control. So that's pretty simple. And, and a very nice piece of software. Uh, and I'm sure there's more I can do with it, I just haven't gone through it in detail. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, Slicer 3 uh, from Prusa. Uh, it crashes frequently. I have lots of troubles with it uh, crashing. And so I have to close it down when I'm not using it. Uh, I took out the starting code. Uh, there were two G codes, I think, in the beginning. One was homing, which was homing on this actual bolt right here. That was a problem for me. Whenever something would home on this bolt, I would end up crashing into the board a lot because it would push, the nozzle would push down on this bolt while the uh, pen dub was homing here. It would continue to push down. The pen dub would never reach its destination until it had pushed down so far that it was literally ripping the board apart when it finally got out of here and started doing things. So. Uh, the, the PEI sheet that I put down is toward to smithereens because of that little bolt right there. So now I don't I don't home in the beginning of a job. I move over and home off the center here. If I could add back in a new homing location in Marlin, I probably would put that G code back in there. I just haven't because I don't know how to change Marlin yet for that. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Oh, that was the Z homing uh, ending code that I removed. Oh, I need to export this uh, Marlin settings. I need to export the uh, front interface settings. And I want to put them in a new computer. I got another computer I'm going to use. It's not a laptop. This laptop powers down on its own a lot. So it's just not a very good laptop. It's a spare I had laying around from years ago. But I have another computer set up downstairs that I want to put this on. It's a bigger screen and everything else. So that's my goal. And I want to be able to export these settings and dump them in there. Because I tried to hook up to that other computer loaded all the software, and none of it worked the same. I, I guess because I didn't have all the settings set from the things I worked through and set. Or I maybe just downloaded the settings from somebody else, I don't remember. Unless uh, they're working. So I want to get back to these settings and dump them out. I need to figure out how to export settings. Uh, filament spool. Filament needs to be moved freely. I had some problems with this jamming up originally. Uh, when I unloosened it a whole bunch to try and let it go free, I ended up getting a bird's nest and it basically caught itself and wouldn't spool the thread out. I actually just had a few problems with this very print a few minutes ago on the back side of it. It jammed up with some black goo. I'm guessing that was something that was in the actual filament. Maybe it was in an old version of the filament that I had. I had black going on here earlier. So, don't know. I think that's all the stuff I missed in the last video. So I'm sorry I had to edit this in before I could upload it. I wanted to make sure I mentioned those software parts that I didn't get a chance to mention in my other video. At least I didn't think I did, so I'll edit it to make sure. The disk ran I had to reload it. Uh, I was saying the uh, printer spool. Well, I was saying that the uh, filament. All I've used is PLA. That's the only filament I've tried. I've not tried ABS or anything else. I have a spool of ABS, but everybody keeps telling me you got to have a heated enclosure for ABS, and I don't have one. Plus some of my parts are PLA, like the wire rods. So if I put it in there, I'm not sure if they would melt. So I'm going to stick to PLA until I know for sure that I can do ABS. Or I'll try ABS and see what happens without the heat explosion. Nonetheless, what I have now is PLA. I have blue and I have black. I haven't done a lot of prints. So I was shocked at how long it takes to print this stuff. I saw it on videos. I've heard people tell you. But until you print your own pieces, it takes forever to print something, especially when you're anxious to get it. Printing it, walk away, come back when it's done, that's where I want to get now. That's my big goal now that I've printed a few pieces. I started these, oh, I don't know, two hours ago, and they're not done yet. And they're literally two flat pieces of plastic. Oh my gosh, it takes forever and I'm running at 145 speed. I'm not sure what 145% speed means. 
but that's what I'm writing at. And I think that was everything. The only thing I want to really focus on is this. Thank you very much, Tom. If you watch any of my videos, two thumbs up. Amazing what you did for me here. I've never used a 3D printer. I don't know the first things about 3D printers. I started from scratch. Only watched your videos, and the one other gentleman that I mentioned, I will go in and point out his name. Uh, there's actually a third person that I just started watching recently here. His name is Julian. But there are literally three videos that I've kind of watched that are build videos. Uh, Julian's right at the same steps I'm at right here, I think. I might be pronouncing it wrong. I apologize for that. But those three people, have, Tom, you were amazing. I watched all 17 hours of your videos, I think, four times. So you've taken up a good percentage of my life. I appreciate it. And I, I still watch. And uh, anybody out there who hasn't, stop by his site and watch some of his videos. It's pretty amazing, especially if you like 3D printing or if you just like maker space type stuff. So that's where we stand. Um, I got this whole video in, and we're still printing. That's what I'm talking about. It takes forever. So if you don't have the patience for it, don't build it. Because it will take forever. That's all. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. I may go into some specialized things like the power supplies and such forth. Or I may go into some details about ABS printing and other things. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll catch you guys later.